I am a witch. A real house haunting, broom riding, cauldron stirring witch. Did you know that Elizabeth Montgomery was married four different times? Or that she was also an accomplished painter? No, I don't know him. Join us today as we delve into the crazy life of a pioneering Hollywood beauty at the golden age of her career and her life before that. Let's begin. Does a beautiful girl live next door? You might say that. Elizabeth Montgomery, the enigmatic and talented actress, captivated audiences with her iconic role as Samantha Stevens in the beloved television series Bewitched. With her striking beauty, infectious charm, and versatility as an actress, Montgomery left an indelible mark on the world of entertainment. Beyond her famous witchy character, there are countless intriguing facts that remain hidden behind the glitz and glamour of her on-screen persona. Let's uncover the life of Elizabeth Montgomery that showcases her multifaceted personality and the impact she had on both the entertainment industry and society as a whole. From her activism to her personal life, Get ready to sink into the fascinating world of this timeless Hollywood icon. As the star of the classic TV sitcom Bewitched, actress Elizabeth Montgomery could get anything she desired with just a magical twitch of her nose. However, off screen, the blonde beauty struggled to find happiness, running through four tumultuous marriages and bewitching many of Hollywood's leading men. Known as one of the sexiest and most desirable women in Hollywood, she cast a spell on such stars as Elvis Presley, Dean Martin, and Gary Cooper. The blonde beauty began her career in the 1950s in Hollywood and later became an industry icon through hard work. Even though Montgomery is no more, the legacy and the projects she accomplished during her lifetime still speak for themselves. While most of them have won her envious awards, others have given her immense popularity in show business and beyond. Without further ado, let's explore the world of Elizabeth Montgomery's crazy life. Let's sit down and talk. <laughs> Montgomery was what? born on April 15, 1933 in Los Angeles, California, to Broadway actress Elizabeth Daniel Bryan Allen and film star Robert Montgomery. Montgomery's mother was a native of Kentucky and her father was a New Yorker through and through. She had an elder sister who was born in 1931 and died in infancy, Martha Bryan Montgomery, named after her aunt Martha Bryan Allen, and a younger brother, Robert B. Montgomery Jr. The soon-to-be legendary singer was of Scottish and Irish ancestry. Funny enough, Genealogical research, which was conducted after her death, revealed that she and Lizzie Borden, acquitted of the murder of her father and stepmother in 1893, were sixth cousins once removed. Both of them were descended from 17th century Massachusetts resident John Luther. Montgomery portrayed Borden in the television film The Legend of Lizzie Borden, 1975, unaware that Borden was in fact her distant cousin. After attending the Westlake School for Girls in Holmby Hills, California, Montgomery graduated from the Spence School in New York City. She studied at the American Academy of Dramatic Arts in Manhattan for three years. However, the daughter of movie legend Robert Montgomery suffered from a father complex, often falling in love with older men and sought out troubled lovers who abused her physically and mentally. Her parents divorced when she was a teenager, and that really impacted her relationship with her father. Prior to that, she had already had problems with him because he didn't want her to become an actress and was naturally against her love for older men. Well, that doesn't mean we took it. It just means it disappeared. Montgomery made her television debut in her father's series, Robert Montgomery Presents, and on later occasions, she appeared as a member of his summer stock company of performers. In October 1953, Montgomery made her Broadway debut, starring in Late Love, for which she won a Theatre World Award for her performance. 
She then made her film debut in Otto Preminger's The Court Martial of Billy Mitchell, 1955. Montgomery returned to Broadway in 1956, appearing in The Loud Red Patrick. Montgomery's early career consisted of starring roles and appearances in live television dramas and series, such as Studio One, Kraft Television Theater, Johnny Staccato, Burke's Law, The Twilight Zone, The Eleventh Hour, Wagon Train, Boris Karloff's Thriller, and Alfred Hitchcock Presents. She was also nominated at the 13th Primetime Emmy Awards for her portrayal of Southern nightclub performer Rusty Heller in a 1960 episode of The Untouchables, playing opposite David White, who later portrayed Larry Tate on Bewitched. In the ABC sitcom Bewitched, Montgomery played the central role of lovable witch Samantha Stevens, with Dick York and later with Dick Sargent as her husband. Starting in the second season of the series, she also played the role of Samantha's mischievous cousin, Serena, under the pseudonym Pandora Spox, a pun on Pandora's box. Bewitched became a rating success, as it was, at the time, the highest rated series ever for the network. The series aired for eight seasons, from 1964 to 1972, and Montgomery received five Emmy and four Golden Globe nominations for her role on Bewitched. Despite low ratings late in the series' run, it was renewed for a ninth season to run from fall of 1972. However, Montgomery's marriage to Bewitched director William Asher was failing, and the couple had separated by the end of the eighth season. This situation caused severe friction in their professional relationship, and it also ended any possibility of another season. As a consolation to ABC, Montgomery and Asher, under their company name Ashmont, which produced Bewitched, offered a half-hour sitcom, The Paul Lynde Show, to the network for the 1972-1973 season. Lynde's series only lasted one year. In a parody of her Samantha Stevens role, she made a cameo appearance as a witch at the end of the beach party film How to Stuff a Wild Bikini, 1965. The film was directed by Asher, her husband at the time. That same year, she also provided the voice of Samantha for an episode of the animated series, The Flintstones. Bewitched was one of the 60s biggest hit TV comedies, but behind the scenes lay a turbulent drama. Elizabeth Montgomery didn't get along with Dick York, who played her husband, Darren Stevens, says biographer Herbie Pilato. He was in love with her, but she was married to the show's producer and it became very uncomfortable for her. He was addicted to painkillers and kept missing episodes until finally they had to replace him with Dick Sargent. Elizabeth also had great battles with Hollywood veteran Agnes Moorhead, who played her mother. Agnes was very fond of Dick York and didn't want to see him go. She was reduced to tears on occasion when talking on the subject of his replacement. Elizabeth tired of Bewitched and tried to quit after the fifth season, but ABC offered her so much money she couldn't refuse. But you could see that by the final season, she was plodding through each episode braless as a nod to women's liberation and didn't want to be there. When her contract was up, ABC offered her another fortune to stay, but she turned it down. After eight seasons, she'd had enough. She wanted to get away from Samantha Stevens as far as she could. She sought out challenging roles, playing a sexual assault victim in a case of rape and an axe killer in The Legend of Lizzie Borden. Montgomery lined a wall of her home with photos from all her movies, but none from Bewitched. Samantha Stevens' trademark nose twitch was inspired by a quirk of Montgomery's. She used to twitch her nose when she was frustrated said her husband, bewitched producer Bill Asher, though that off-screen twitch was doubtless not accompanied by a xylophone sound effect. Though she wearied of bewitched, Montgomery had the last laugh. She owned 20% of the show and made millions of dollars from residuals. Throughout the run of bewitched, many references to Patterson, New York, were made on the series. The Putnam County town was the site of the Montgomery homestead, and it was also the place where she spent her childhood summers. In later years, 
Her mother lived in the family farmhouse on Cushman Road. After Bewitched ended, Elizabeth Montgomery continued to act in various television movies and guest starred on a number of popular television shows. She also became involved in charitable work, serving on the board of directors for the American Cancer Society. Montgomery died in 1995 at the age of 62 from cancer. Because of her roles in The Dick Van Dyke Show and The Flying Nun, as well as her role as Bewitched, Montgomery was well known for her comedic and dramatic talents, and her role as Bewitched gave her the opportunity to showcase them. It aired for nine seasons before coming to an end in 1966. Despite being known for her gentle, loving demeanor, Endora was also capable of striking fear into her opponents with her witchy power. Despite its strong comedy and family-friendly values, the show was also popular due in part to Montgomery's portrayal of Endora. After the show, Montgomery went on to star in films like The Towering Inferno and The Great Gatsby. Montgomery returned to Samantha-like twitching of her nose and on-screen magic in a series of Japanese television commercials, 1980-1983, for Mother, Chocolate Biscuits and Cookies, which were produced by the confectionery conglomerate Lotta Corp. These Japanese commercials provided a substantial salary for Montgomery while she remained out of sight of non-Japanese fans and the Hollywood industry. In the United States, Montgomery spent much of her later career pursuing dramatic roles that took her as far away from the good-natured Samantha as possible. Among her later roles were performances that brought her Emmy Award nominations, A Rape Victim in a Case of Rape, 1974, and The Accused but Acquitted, Murderer Lizzie Borden in William Bast's The Legend of Lizzie Borden, 1975. After the actress died, Rhonda McClure, a genealogist, discovered that Montgomery and Borden were distant cousins. Montgomery made many appearances on the game show Password. Alan Ludden, the show's longtime host, called her the Queen of Password. Montgomery later played a pioneer woman facing hardship in 1820s Ohio in the miniseries The Awakening Land, 1978 for which she earned her ninth Emmy nomination. In The Killing Affair, 1977, Montgomery played the role of a police detective who has an affair with her married partner, played by O.J. Simpson. In the television film Amos, 1985, she played a rare villainous role as a vicious nurse who abuses her wards in a home for senior citizens. The wards are played by Kirk Douglas and Dorothy McGuire, among others. In 1989, Montgomery returned to Broadway one last time in a production of Love Letters, opposite Robert Foxworth. She played one of her last roles in an episode of Batman, the animated series entitled Showdown, in which she played a barmaid. This was also her final work to be screened, since the episode aired posthumously. Her last television series, was the highly rated Edna Buchanan detective series. The second and final film of the series received its first airing on May 9, 1995, only nine days before Montgomery died. Despite her enigmatic personality on her major on-screen appearances, Elizabeth's off-screen life might have even been more interesting and not always in a good way. Elizabeth Montgomery was a nymphomaniac she was sexually insatiable. She was constantly seeking new sexual partners and was never satisfied with just one man. This would later reflect in her many affairs and marriage. In 1954, Montgomery married New York City socialite Frederick Gallatin Kaman. The couple divorced less than a year later. She was married to Academy Award-winning actor Gig Young from 1956 to 1963. And then she was married to director-producer William Asher from 1963 until their divorce in 1973. They had three children, William, Robert, and Rebecca. The latter two pregnancies were incorporated into Bewitched as Samantha's pregnancies. During the eighth year of the show, Montgomery fell in love with director Richard Michaels. 
Their resulting affair led to the end of both of their marriages, as well as the end of the series. They moved in together when shooting ended in 1972. The relationship lasted two and a half years. On January 28, 1993, she married actor Robert Foxworth after living with him for nearly 20 years. They remained married until her death in 1995. Now that was just a quick run through. Let's break this journey down to detail, shall we? According to author Herbie J. Pilato, Montgomery had an affair with Alexander Godunov while she was living with Foxworth, but was not yet married to him. Godunov was found dead on May 18, 1995, the day Montgomery died. But it is believed that he died several days before Montgomery. She enchanted every man she ever met, says Herbie Pilato, author of the new biography Twitch Upon a Star. But she seemed drawn to troubled men, not nice guys. She was always looking for the bad boy, which may have been part of her rebellion against her father. Though she had her Bentleys and Beverly Hills mansion and made millions from Bewitched, ultimately she had a dark side to her. In the early 60s, she became a close friend of President John F. Kennedy and Pilato notes. He chased almost every beautiful woman he met, though if anything happened, Elizabeth never spoke about it. She married four times and had three children with her third husband, Bewitched producer Bill Ash yet she may never have found true happiness. She was beautiful and alluring and looking for love, says Pilato. She worked with Gary Cooper on the movie The Court Martial of Billy Mitchell, and he had a thing for her. He was an older man, which she loved. A stagehand caught the duo alone in Cooper's dressing room, sparking on-set scandal. Dean Martin was smitten with her when they filmed Who's Been Sleeping in My Bed. He was a romantic and loved women. And again, for Elizabeth, there was the attraction of an older man. Elvis Presley was closer to her age when they co-starred in Kid Galahad, but he wanted her. Her much older husband got upset when he saw Elvis flirting with her on set, but Presley called him an asshole. He was an alcoholic and she was drawn to him perhaps hoping to rescue him, but he was abusive and self-destructive. Elizabeth had an affair with him while with the man who became her fourth husband. When Montgomery split from Godunov, he fell into a downward spiral. He lost himself in an alcoholic haze, says a Hollywood insider. He eventually drank himself to death. Montgomery became a star as Samantha Stevens, the wholesome, bubbly, nose-twitching housewife witch of Bewitched. Yet her four marriages were as troubled as her affairs. Her first husband was rich New York socialite Fred Cameron, about a decade older than her, whom she met while filming a TV show. But he wanted her to quit acting and be a stay-at-home wife in New York. And Elizabeth had ambition. She soon took off for California, and a career and their marriage went south. Her second husband was the Oscar-winning movie star Gig Young, some 25 years her senior, and at 48, almost her father's age. Her father was notably horrified by the notion. Elizabeth was 22 and infatuated, but Gig Young was an alcoholic, emotionally abusive and probably physically abusive as well. She tried to save him, but their marriage broke down. It may have been a lucky escape. Young shot his second wife to death and then killed himself in a murder-suicide. Elizabeth's third husband was bewitched producer Bill Asher, yet another older man. But that marriage struggled and he had affairs throughout Bewitched, despite the success of Bewitched, which became one of America's top-rated TV shows. Boredom set in after a few seasons, and Montgomery launched into an affair with one of the directors, Richard Michaels, shattering both their marriages in 1971. Toward the end of his life, Bill Asher still missed Elizabeth and was crying his heart out for her, saying, It was all my fault, says Pilato. He couldn't get over her. Then she met former Falcon Crest star Robert Foxworth, nine years her junior. They were together 20 years before they finally got married, soon after she ended her affair with Alexander Godunov. But later, 
she was diagnosed with cancer and died 18 months after they wed. Montgomery spent her life trying to resolve the conflict with her famous and overbearing father. He was Hollywood royalty, and her mother was Broadway actress Elizabeth Allen. Remember we mentioned that she made her debut on her father's weekly TV show in 1951. She was a famous movie star of the 40s and 50s and a major TV star in the 60s, however, she struggled to escape his shadow. He didn't want her to become an actress and that sparked the beginning of her resentment. He was her toughest critic as an actress and was very hard on her personal life too, from the way she walked and her posture to her penchant for older men. He was of the notion that she was trying to replace him with all her older lovers. Recall she was a teen when her parents divorced and that strained her relationship with her father even further. Her dysfunctional childhood family home haunted her for years. She was conflicted trying to please her father, but also rebelling against him. She wanted him to play her father on Bewitched, but he refused. It was proposed that he resented the fact that his daughter had become a bigger star than he was. When she appeared in the TV movie The Legend of Lizzie Borden, about a woman accused of killing her parents with an axe, Robert Montgomery said, You would. He took it as a personal affront as if she secretly wanted to kill her own father. Robert Montgomery was a staunch Republican and Elizabeth became a fervent Democrat, fighting for social causes that antagonized her father. And she was one of the earliest stars supporting AIDS victims and campaigning for gay rights. Despite her pampered upbringing, she was unaffected, very down to earth. Perhaps that's why she bewitched so many of the men in her life. She walked away from the Hollywood life. She didn't like the fakeness of Hollywood and its people. She had wanted to quit acting before she even began filming Bewitched, but her husband Bill Asher told her, don't quit, you have too much talent. She always had a love-hate relationship with acting that allowed her to pick and choose the roles she really wanted after Bewitched finished. She ended up becoming the queen of the TV shows. Montgomery was nominated for eight Emmy Awards but never won. She refused to play the Hollywood game and didn't go to the parties or take out ads begging for award consideration. She wanted her work to speak for itself. Montgomery was personally devoted to liberal political causes and she lent her name, along with a large amount of her time, money and energy, to a wide variety of charitable and political causes. She was a champion of women's rights, AIDS activism, and gay rights. She was also an ardent critic of the Vietnam War, and in later years she was an active advocate for AIDS research and outreach to the disabled community. Professionally, she lent her voice as the narrator of two political documentaries which were critical of US foreign policy, cover-up, behind the Iran-Contra affair, 1988, and its Academy Award-winning sequel, The Panama Deception, 1992. In June 1992, Montgomery and Dick Sargent, her former bewitched co-star, as well as her good friend, were grand marshals at the Los Angeles Gay Pride Parade. During the last year of her life, Montgomery volunteered at the Los Angeles Unit of Learning Ally, a non-profit organization which records educational audiobooks for disabled people. In 1994, Montgomery produced radio and television public service announcements for Learning Alley's Los Angeles unit. The following January, Montgomery recorded the 1952 edition of When We Were Very Young by A. A. Milner. On June 3, 1995, 16 days after her death, Learning Alley's Los Angeles unit dedicated its 1995 record-a-thon to Montgomery. 21 other celebrities lent their talents to a recorded version of Chicken Soup for the Soul, which was dedicated to her memory. Montgomery suffered from colon cancer. She ignored the influenza-like symptoms during the filming of Deadline for Murder from the files of Edna Buchanan, which she finished filming in late March 1995. Due to the late diagnosis, the cancer metastasized from her colon to her liver. 
With no hope of recovery and unwilling to die in a hospital, Montgomery chose to return to her Beverly Hills home that she shared with Foxworth. She died on the morning of May 18, 1995, at the age of 62, surrounded by Foxworth and her three children from her previous marriage to William Asher. Her body was cremated. Her death came just 18 months after she tied the knot with her fourth husband. Her death came quickly, only six weeks after colon cancer was diagnosed. She joked that she wanted pina colada in her IV drip. And when the end came in her 26-room Beverly Hills mansion, she sent her family away from her deathbed, wishing to die alone. She didn't want anyone to see her that way, recalled former husband Asher. Then she slipped away. On June 18, 1995, one month after her death, a memorial service was held at the Cannon Theatre in Beverly Hills. Herbie Hancock played music, Amanda McBroom sang, and Dominic Dunn spoke about the early years of their friendship when both of them lived in New York City, while Foxworth read many of the sympathy cards sent by fans. Other speakers included her nurse, her brother, her daughter, and her stepson. Montgomery had kept her parents' home in Patterson, Putnam County, New York. Roughly three years after her death, the estate was sold and became a part of Wonder Lake State Park. Even after her death, many of her fans continue to revere her legacy and contributions to various causes are still remembered and celebrated today. Her talent and charisma made her an unforgettable icon. Her remarkable legacy lives on through her work and the positive impact she made during her lifetime. In conclusion, Elizabeth Montgomery was a truly enigmatic and fascinating figure in the world of entertainment. Her talent, beauty and versatility made her a beloved icon during her time and continue to captivate audiences to this day. From her iconic role as Samantha Stevens in Bewitched to her passionate dedication to social activism, Montgomery left an indelible mark on both the entertainment industry and society as a whole. With her innate ability to effortlessly switch between comedy and drama, Montgomery showcased a remarkable range that few actors could match. She brought depth and complexity to her characters, captivating viewers with her incredible performances. Behind the scenes, Montgomery was known for her professionalism, kindness, and unwavering work ethic. Off-screen, Montgomery's private life was equally intriguing. Her relationships, personal struggles, and relentless dedication to numerous charitable causes made her a multidimensional woman who defied expectations. She used her platform and influence to speak up and fight for issues close to her heart, making her a true trailblazer in the industry. In the end, Elizabeth Montgomery's legacy is one of talent, beauty, and an unwavering commitment to making a difference. Her impact on Hollywood and her enduring popularity serve as a testament to her enduring appeal and the lasting impression she left on both the silver screen and the hearts of millions around the world. Were you surprised by any facts said here? Did you enjoy the tale of Montgomery with all its ups and downs? Let us know in the comments below. If you like this video, you'll love the one showing on your screen right now. Click now and we'll see you in the next one.